Um, in, the, in the meantime, uh, Professor Kitamo has uh, joined us, so it's a great pleasure for, for me to welcome him. So Professor T Takehiko Kitamori is, uh, uh, has been professor at the uh, University of Tokyo for a long time, but he's now a honorary professor at the National Tsinghua University in Taiwan. Uh, professor Kitamori has studied in uh, Tokyo. He has obtained there his uh, PhD uh, in engineering in uh, 1980 at Tokyo University. And then he became a professor and uh, eventually dean and vice president of the School of Engineering. Um, we know uh, him very well in our field because he's the inventor with uh, Professor Sawada of the thermal lens method, which uh, many of us uh, use uh, currently, but uh, Professor Kitamori has also an impressive range of achievements in uh, nanofluidics, microfluidics, uh, uh, for a, a large range of biomedical applications. Uh, Professor Kitamori has received many honors and uh, will not go through the whole list, but in particular, he has been uh, uh, the Simon Widmer awardee of the Swiss Chemical Society, and he's also a member of the Royal, Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And in addition to that, he's also honorary professor in Lund in uh, Sweden. Sweden. Uh, and so it's a very uh, great honor for us to have uh, this pioneer with us today. And on a personal note, I must say that his work with uh, Sawada was inspiration for our own uh, photothermal microscopy method back when I was in France. So Professor Kitamori, we're very happy to, uh, to have you with us uh, because our second speaker will unfortunately not be able to join today uh, because of family problems. Uh, you, you can have up to 45 minutes for your talk, then take your time and uh, there will be time also for many questions. Mm -hmm. So. Please, mm. Professor Kitamoi, the floor mm. is yours. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, so, oh, so shall I uh, share the, oh, my PowerPoint? Okay, can you, yes, can you see it works. my... Perfectly. Uh, okay, okay. Mm, we thank see you very it much. perfectly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, okay. And then, so... I have to use a laser pointer. Mm. And then, so, okay. Mm. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, uh, for kind invitation to this um, uh, a very, very um, uh, established uh, 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 international webinar. And then, so the, uh, Professor Oritz, um, uh, thank you very much for your kind so, uh, introduction of me. And so, uh, my name is uh, Takehiko Kitamori, and uh, as a uh, uh, I was introduced, um, so I'm now so uh, the Yushian Honorary Chair Professor of the National Chinfa University of Taiwan. And uh, so uh, I moved to Taiwan a uh, couple of years ago before the pandemic. And then so um, uh, I continue uh, to so, uh, uh, so research on the micro uh, and nanofluidics and also the uh, photosomal uh, spectroscopy. And today, so I'd like to introduce um, uh, my activity uh, on a uh, summer laser microscope and then so the, uh, the microfluidics and the nanofluidics. Okay. And uh, uh, so, uh, I want to um, uh, introduce um, uh, the microfluidics and the nanofluidics first. And then, so the, uh, after that, uh, I'd like to introduce some of um, uh, the brief history of the thermal lens microscope. And then, so the, uh, summer, uh, the invention of uh, thermal lens microscope is uh, deeply relating to the uh, initiation of uh, microfluidics. And uh, that is why so I'd like to so introduce uh, our TLM and microfluidics. And so the, uh, after that, uh, uh, I will go into the, the nano so, uh, space. And then, so that for the nano space, we modified our thermal lens microscope to the uh, DIC, uh, differential so interference uh, uh, contrast uh, no, microscope uh, combined to the TLM. So we call this one as a, a photosomal optical space shift no, detector. So, that, so I will introduce the DIC TLM, so that's it, the POPs. And then so that, uh, the POPs is applied to the nanofluidics and uh, one of the some, uh, typical so examples of the nanofluidics uh, is a single cell immunoassay. And then, so uh, I'd like to introduce um, uh, this um, uh, device. 
and uh, POPs detection of a countable number of the molecule in liquid. And uh, so last one is a very, very brief uh, uh, conclusion. Then so that now uh, first topics is a uh, microfluidics and uh, nanofluidics. And so that, uh, so this um, our, our illustration is uh, something like a very, very typical chemical experiment. And uh, so uh, your background, maybe some now uh, so scattered and someone so, uh, is from chemistry and also the biology. So the, now the now people from chemistry and the biology, uh, it's not needed to you know, explain this kind of things. However, the background is um, uh, not, uh, some, not the chemistry. Uh, and then so uh, I'd like to mention something about the unit operation. So, the, no, so this one uh, is a glass apparatus. And then, so this is a typical procedure of the uh, water analysis. And so uh, the, those, um, so uh, the procedure is consist of, so uh, each, or oh, chemical operation. This one is um, uh, phase or uh, <laughs> uh, liquid mixing and reaction. This is a phase contact and extraction. So like this way, all of those kind of um, so operation is named as a, some uh, unit operation. This is um, so, uh, the terms of the uh, chemical engineering. And all of those um, so unit operation is integrated on or the uh, glass um, uh, substrate. And then, so that, uh, this is our, some, uh, 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 the animation of the working principle of this device. And the first place is a uh, mixing and reaction. And then, so uh, this channel is a mixing and reaction. And the second one is a phase uh, conference. So uh, the, this is aqueous, aqueous, and then, so this is an organic solution. So organic solution that join to the aqueous phase. So uh, this kind of phase, some uh, some uh, confluence is a uh, uh, some uh, one of the some uh, unit operation also. And then shaking and uh, so so extraction is like this way. And so uh, our target molecule is extracted to the organic phase. And after that, some uh, organic phase is uh, separated from the aqueous phase. Uh, this is a phase separation. So uh, like this way. All kind of those um, uh, unit operation is integrated on a uh, single um, uh, device. This is microfluidics, and then the uh, merit of the microfluidics is a rapid, cheap, and easy, and anyone can operate it. And so that also uh, it's uh, something very similar uh, to the uh, semiconductor. And so that getting people to use um, uh, high tech uh, chemistry uh, for the web. And then, so the, uh, as I told you, this is um, uh, the, uh, uh, the procedure of the water analysis. And then, so the, uh, we invented uh, some of the micro unit operation. So uh, this one is a mixing. And then, so the mixing is a very easy to use uh, some uh, Y shape, uh, no, the micro channel. And so the two solution is uh, easily so mix each other and the chemical reaction start. And then, so the in case, or uh, the uh, immiscible so, uh, liquid, like organic solution, so it's uh, confluent to, to the, uh, so, uh, the aqueous uh, phase. And then, so uh, those are the, uh, cannot mix each other and parallelly so, uh, so, uh, go along to the uh, channel. So because our uh, gravity is uh, small, and so that uh, small comparing to the other uh, interface tension, so this kind of the parallel flow is easily so, uh, formed. And then this is extraction. So uh, like this way, all kind of those kind, so all those macro scale unit operation can be uh, replaced by the micro unit operation. And then so that uh, those are micro unit operation uh, can be combined each other. Uh, this is a serial connection and this is a parallel connection. So it's um, uh, same as uh, so, uh, or electronic circuit, or the, uh, those um, the parts can be combined serially and parallel. And so that now this kind of the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the circuit of the liquid can be designed. So this is um, uh, the mixing and this, this one is like uh, extraction. This one is a uh, uh, parallel combination. This one and this one is a serial combination. So like this way, we can somehow freely design the uh, circuit of the liquid. And then, so, uh, so uh, this was, uh, uh, this is a 
a pattern of the microchannel, so publicated on the glass substrate. So, uh, uh, so uh, this one is the same as a uh, so electronic uh, device that we call so this one as uh, some uh, chemical central some uh, processing unit. Okay. And then, so the, at the end of the uh, processing, so now uh, we should uh, so detect the target molecule very, very sensitively. And so that uh, we apply so uh, our TRM thermal red microscope out here. So I will mention, uh, I will explain so this one so uh, just uh, now after this explanation. And then, so that now uh, this is a, a typical so, uh, the chemical so apparatus, uh, which is used for the uh, water analysis. And then all of those apparatus. Uh, that could be some uh, uh, so integrated on this uh, glass uh, substrate, okay? And the performance is uh, quite good. So uh, the, uh, the professional analytical technician now uh, uses those glass apparatus, and for the water analysis, the half day is needed. However, the, our device completes some, uh, all of the process less than one minute. And then the sample needed is a uh, one kilogram, so one liter. However, so our device needs just one microgram. And then lower limit of detection. Uh, it's um, so, uh, due to the um, uh, high sensitivity of the thermal lens microscope. Uh, the, uh, so it's uh, improved from picomola to 0.08 zeptomol. Zeptomol is a 10 to the minus 21. And so the uh, absolute amount of the target um, so, uh, as atoms is uh, 48 atoms in liquid. So like this way, some, uh, all of the, some, uh, the, uh, the uh, performance is uh, some, uh, remarkably so improved by this kind of the, so, uh, micro integration. And then so uh, this is um, so something uh, so, uh, typical so, uh, micro physics. And then so the, uh, I'd like to so, uh, introduce uh, a root of uh, uh, thermal lens microscope. So why so uh, we know uh, uh, so, uh, could uh, reach to the uh, idea of the thermal lens microscope. This is uh, our next topics. And then, so this one is a chronograph um, uh, of the history of the uh, microfluidics. And then, so the first microfluidics is an uh, on-chip electrophoresis. And uh, you may know the uh, terms of the microtas. And then, so the uh, so microtas is uh, some, uh, just uh, some uh, on-chip electrophoresis. And then it started from 1990. And then, so the, now this is a number of the paper. The number of the paper is rapidly increased. And then, so that uh, some of the many people participate in this, uh, this area. And then, so that our some uh, also other team so uh, the started uh, so microfluidics are quite so independent so uh, from those uh, groups. So we some uh, uh, try to develop the thermal lens microscope first. And then, so after that, some. Uh, we some, uh, so use our device uh, for the chemical reaction, cell culture, extraction, immunoassay, and so the, uh, many, many other kinds of the, uh, the uh, operations. And so the uh, cell uh, some, uh, technology, the immunoassay extraction, those are the, uh, the today's microfluidics mainstream. So now uh, we initiated uh, those kinds of the, uh, so, uh, the uh, research area of the microfluidics. The difference of the uh, so of this um, of the micro is a uh, pressure driven microfluidics. So we can use the uh, organic solution and many kind of the uh, uh, the uh, so organic solutions. Uh, uh, and then so that uh, this uh, our method is a quite so a uh, general method, and that is why the many people so now use this one. And then so that after that so uh, uh, we so commercialize and practicalize uh, the microfluidics. And this one is this chemical plant, and this one is a blood so diagnosis analyzer. And so simultaneously, so now we started to nanofluidics also. And then so that now so now we are now so also working on the nanofluidics. Even in the nanofluidics, we so now realize the chromatography extraction, immunosay, and so or some other kind of the technologies. And then so that so I'd like to mention about uh, some also uh, TRM, some of the history. So, so oh, this is the working principle of the TRM. And then so that we introduce um, uh, two kinds of the laser beam. Uh, one is the uh, excitation and so the, uh, another one is the cold beam. This one is the objective lens of the microscope. And then so that oh, this one is a uh, micro channel. The micro channel contains um, uh, the liquid sample. And then so that uh, uh, 
in case if uh, so all there is um, a target molecule so which absorbs the excitation uh, beam or uh, this um, our target molecule so um, or uh, emit the heat instead of the light because of uh, uh, so our target is a non flattened molecule and then so that or uh, some uh, this uh, heat uh, changes um, uh, uh, the temperature around so uh, uh, this area and then so that or uh, lensing effect to induced uh, like this way so this is a summer lens sum of here uh, no need to explain the here, so because of some of this is a summer lens or uh, uh, photo summer or uh, 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 the webinar. So maybe so, uh, almost all of the, uh, the participants know uh, uh, this effect. And then so the, uh, the summer lens effect is uh, usually is, uh, the concave lens. And that, that is why the, uh, uh, the uh, concave lens changes uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the focal length of the objective lens. And then so that this kind of the change of the Ray Lucas occur. And so the uh, intensity of the, of the flow beam so, uh, becomes uh, higher than the original one. And so the, uh, when we so, uh, detect the intensity of the flow beam, so we can know the uh, intensity of the, uh, the degree of the thermal lens effect. And then so the, uh, this one is um, uh, the calibration line, the thermal lens effect. Uh, so now uh, that's a very, very old that's um, uh, so 25 so years ago. And so, the, so as you can see, so uh, the number of the molecules, you know, one, two, three, is a counter, countable number. And then so the, uh, the, uh, the degree of the TRM effect is uh, like this way. And so it's very, very some, uh, some, uh, so linearly so proportional to the number of the molecule. And then so that even there are some uh, the sub-single molecule can be detected. So sub-single molecule, so of course, um, uh, means uh, uh, so statistical so uh, meaning. So even the molecules so, uh, go so away from the uh, so, uh, focal region, uh, the, uh, the summer effect still remain. So the time average of the molecule is 0 0.3. So uh, this is uh, some, uh, our uh, some, uh, uh, first result of the TRM development. And then this one is a commercialized uh, TRM. So however, so uh, at that time, so it's our uh, so, uh, 1980s. So uh, the, uh, it is a common sense that the TLM could not so introduced so uh, under the optical microscope uh, because the optical microscope the uh, the compensated the, uh, uh, the uh, optical aberration and then so the uh, the uh, focal so uh, position of the two color beam should be so uh, same because of that this is a microscope. So that uh, the, uh, any colors or um, uh, the wavelengths uh, uh, that uh, the Ray Lucas so, uh, focus on the same point. This is a microscope. And then, so in such a case, the thermal lens so, uh, occurred, so uh, induced at the focal position of excitation beam. But uh, so the uh, flow beams of focal position is the same. And then the or Ray Lucas cannot change by the uh, so lensing effect. The, uh, the Ray Lucas passes through the center of the lens, it uh, go straight forward. That is why the no change so now uh, induced by uh, photothermal effect. And so the, uh, we believe some of uh, this um, uh, the, uh, the common sense, and that is why when we applied so this one so to the Imaging of the so, cell, or this is an imaging of the cancer cell. And so, however, we published this some so, uh, of the paper, so uh, without using the thermal lens microscope. And so that uh, we so, uh, denoted the photo thermal microscope with excitation and the probe beam coaxial <laughs> under microscope. Uh, this is um, also 1993. Uh, however, so, uh, sometimes so, uh, one of my students, I um, uh, officer, a difference of the excitation beam focal position and the flow beam focal position. Uh, this is a very, very old uh, microscope. Uh, it's already so, uh, 50 years old microscope. So this one is our, so, uh, our microscope, which was used for the uh, summer lens experiment. And then so that now uh, we, <laughs> Uh, we picked up so uh, uh, this um, uh, the old fashion so microscope from a baggage yard of uh, the uh, school of medicine, and so that now uh, we apply so uh, this one uh, to the experiment of the thermal microscope. 
And then the fortunate ring. So this is a so old so now fashion of the now microscope. Or oh, this uh, objective means has a lot of uh, so chromatic ablation. And then so that oh, the chromatic ablation is a 2.2 micrometer. And so this is um, some of the very lucky for us. The uh, optimal so, uh, the, uh, difference of the two focal lengths is the confocal length. And then so that so under the, our experiment condition, the confocal length is a 2.8 micro. And then so the difference is uh, quite similar. That is why we can somehow succeed to detect the thermal lens of the signal so from this old fashioned so or microscope. And after that, some we made a many, many kind of the so theoretical and so experimental some or the experiment. And finally, so in the 2000, uh, about uh, 10 years after, some we some proved our microscope is a Truly, the thermal lens or uh, so effect, and so that uh, we published this one so, uh, in uh, some uh, uh, in the paper, and so that uh, after that, so uh, we uh, so optimize optical conf so configuration of a thermal lens, and and then so the, uh, according to the theory of the thermal lens um, uh, or the, uh, the spectroscopy, and so and then so this one is an uh, optimized uh, thermal lens microscope. And so uh, we uh, succeeded to so detect uh, 0.3 molecules uh, by using this one. And then so that, uh, this one so, uh, cost costed some uh, 300,000 US dollars. However, so, uh, this one is free of charge because uh, we picked up so, uh, this one so from the uh, baggage yard of the so, school of medicine. So, uh, but, uh, we are exciting to uh, 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 use uh, uh, this old fashioned uh, summer, some, uh, the microscope to develop the uh, uh, summer lens, uh, no, true summer lens or uh, microscope. And then, so this one is first generation, this one's the second generation. And so this is uh, so, so heavy. And so all of those are so the black fat so is uh, uh, just for uh, uh, the controlling the focal, length, uh, focal length of the flow beam and uh, the excitation beam. And then, so that is too expensive. So uh, we uh, some, uh, some, uh, simplify so, uh, this one. And so this one is a uh, uh, commercialized uh, uh, the thermal lens microscope. And, uh, so, and then, so, that, so after that, the so most important point so, uh, is a, a difference of the, uh, of the focal of the position. Uh, so we uh, develop those kind of the uh, thermal lens devices. And so the, we apply some of uh, this glass um, uh, rod. And so this one is a uh, so optical fiber connector. And then so that uh, we control some of uh, the gradient optics. And then so that uh, we uh, some of uh, uh, the design the, the optimal some of uh, the focal uh, position difference uh, by using so this one. And then so that uh, this single device uh, can work as a thermal lens or detector. And that's all, all this one is a very, very small thermal lens or detector. And then so that now this one is a, so the, or now the on chip detector of the micro. So that uh, this is um, uh, the uh, brief history of the thermal lens microscope. And then, oh, sorry. And then so that now uh, we apply, so uh, this one uh, for the microfluid. And so, that, uh, so I'd like to so, uh, uh, so, uh, introduce uh, uh, the why the microfluidics uh, uh, is uh, so initiated from our teams. And then so, so uh, for the so first experiment, uh, we uh, so fabricate uh, the, uh, the I-shaped channel by using the glass cutter like this way. And then we some, uh, drop the uh, liquid sample like this way. And then so we covered it. And then, so uh, uh, after that, so we into, so insert so this um, uh, some uh, glass substrate uh, under the optical microscope, and then like this way. And so, or uh, some, uh, and then so that we succeeded to develop the thermal microscope like this way. And then, so that uh, this one is also our device to so measure the liquid sample under the optical microscope. And then, so that uh, this one uh, is um, our, or the this one uh, has a uh, six inlet and one outlet. And so that uh, we can introduce one, two, three, four, five, six kind of the solution. And then so that 
uh, without moving so uh, this device uh, 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 we could detect um, uh, some of the signal for each some uh, the solution. And then so that uh, the reproducibility is uh, dramatically so improved by using this device. And after some of uh, them uh, succeeding uh, to some uh, uh, develop the thermal lens uh, microscope, then we apply this device to mixing and uh, inducing a chemical reaction. And then so that after that, so uh, we introduce an uh, immiscible or uh, aqueous and then so organic solution and uh, we succeed the extraction. So like this way, so this device uh, is a origin of the microfluidics, especially the pressure driven so, of microfluidics. And after that, we succeeded uh, so for the many kinds of application. And then so now uh, we prepare the glass fabrication, some uh, instruments and in, in my laboratory, this is a micro And then so the uh, some uh, glass bonding machine, sputtering machine, mask liner, so etching bay. So all of those um, uh, equipment is uh, uh, just for the uh, fabrication of the micro overhead devices. And then so the, uh, those micro overhead devices some uh, is apl applied to biochemistry and there are some uh, the, uh, the, uh, medical some, uh, some uh, use. And so I want to so introduce only one so application. So uh, this is a blood gun diagnosis analyzer. And then so the, uh, uh, this one is uh, also a microfluidic device. And then so uh, those are uh, 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 lit or uh, lightning some or uh, uh, that apart is a TLM micro so, uh, so detector. And then so the, uh, this is the immunoassay, actually the immunoassay so, uh, device. And then so the, uh, the uh, merit is the rapidity, flexibility, and easy operation of ultrasensitivity. Now, of course, there are some, uh, our university hospital, University Hospital of the University of Tokyo has a, a huge um, uh, automatic blood analyzer. So as a high, uh, it's a, as a very, very high slope. The, uh, one day, so the 20,000 of the sample uh, can be analyzed. However, so this is not flexible and uh, some, uh, no, some uh, non uh, uh, compatible for the uh, rare item, only fixed item, and the sensitivity is not so sensitive. So uh, that is why so our collaborator of the university hospital want to use you know, uh, this machine. And then, so I'd like to so, uh, introduce the uh, working principle. So this is a microfluidics for the immunoassay. The, uh, this is a, a capture antibody, and then so the target antigen protein is captured like this way and accumulated in this area. And so after so accumulating the targets of protein, then some our enzyme, some our label or the antibody is introduced. And then the enzymatic reaction change the color. And then so that our TRM detects the color change. So that, uh, this is the working principle. Uh, we apply this one for some, uh, the, uh, some very, very difficult so, uh, disease. So, uh, so our collaborators uh, now want to apply. So our, our collaborator, oh, 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 I want to so into this thing. So uh, Professor Yoshizaki, uh, so, uh, who is a, a professor of the dermatology, and I want to apply our method for the diagnosis. And then so that we apply the, this one for the uh, so dermatomyositis. So uh, this one is very, very so dangerous disease. And uh, so in case if uh, some, uh, uh, your hand so has a, this kind of a rash, please come to my laboratory. I will some, uh, some measure the your MTA5 protein. Uh, this is a, so, uh, the disease marker of the dermatomyositis. And then so, that, so in case if the, uh, your the MTA5 is a positive, then so, uh, you, you have some uh, so risk of dermatomyositis. And then so the dermatomyositis is a not only the some of the uh, dermatological uh, so, uh, disease, but also the autoimmunology. And so 70% of the patient becomes an uh, interstitial uh, pneumonia. Uh, this is a very, very dangerous. And then so the, uh, almost half of the, the patient died by the interstitial so, uh, pneumonia. The, uh, the cause of the death is the same as uh, COVID-19. It's also autoimmunology. And then so the, or uh, the, uh, the, uh, the treatment of this one is uh, quite some of uh, the serious uh, 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 side effect. And then so that 
or giving a strong so immunosuppressant drug. So the side effects is very, very serious. And then so the, or the, the, major, so the exact measurement of the MD5 so the quantity is needed. And then so, the, so all this um, or access is uh, some, or the, or, or the concentration, concentration of uh, or some or MD5. And then so the, or this one is our, so our university of hospitals or the or huge immunosuppressive system. But however, some, or this one is not so intensive. And then, so that this one, the fluorescent immunoassay, the lower limit of detection is also uh, two orders higher. So, however, so our so microfluidics so immunoassay is a uh, so more than two so, uh, orders are, are higher than so fluorescent immunoassay. And because um, uh, this one, the flow system, we can accumulate to the target molecule. And then, so that or some, uh, this is a so resulted, uh, result of the, of the major some of the sample from patient. So uh, or the concentration distribution is like this way. And then, so that, uh, do you make sense? Or the uh, lower limit of detection cannot so, uh, reach to this um, uh, the amount. And even the fluorescent immunoassay cannot measure so those of the people. Only our some of device uh, can so measure it. And then, so that uh, those are, uh, uh, for to those um, of the patient, uh, the, our collaborators um, uh, make a uh, faster uh, medical treatment, and uh, after that, so uh, the uh, the quantity of the MD5 so dramatically so decreases like this, one. and so that uh, uh, unfortunately, so this patient so uh, um, uh, of which MD5 so couldn't uh, uh, decrease, so uh, he uh, so uh, died. So uh, however, the, uh, the uh, other people just survived. Uh, survived. Could survive, and so that those two people, two people, that something is suspicious, and then so we monitor the MD5, and so or uh, some uh, so uh, like this way the MD5 so increase again, and then some uh, the, uh, our collaborators some uh, the, uh, uh, some uh, so, so, so uh, give the second so uh, medical treatment, immunosuppressant uh, 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 treatment, and then so fortunately some uh, the, uh, uh, the MD5 so uh, decrease like that. And so, or um, uh, like this way, so um, uh, this is a new cutoff line of some of uh, this uh, disease, and only our so device based on the thermal range microscope can detect some of uh, those are uh, quite low some of uh, the uh, concentration of the MD5. And then, so that our uh, um, another, another important point is so, uh, so our micro uh, so fluidics. Or needed uh, so, or this kind of the very very so, the small amount of the sample, and so that uh, we are now also applying to them. Uh, so not only this disease, and so that uh, we could so, uh, uh, save the more than thirty percent uh, or thirty patients are uh, alive. So this is our uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, like this way. So our machine is a uh, practically so, uh, uh, usable for the uh, so, uh, medical field. And then, so next one, so all the time is running. So all the, I'd like to some, uh, briefly introduce um, all the, all the nanospace uh, summer lens uh, effect, DICTM, and uh, some, uh, it's the same as the POPs. And so, uh, so we applied some of uh, our uh, detector, not only the micro, but a nano fluid system. And then, so the, uh, this detector is uh, invented at uh, 2009. So this is our micro or the micro channel, and then so that uh, those are the, uh, the, uh, the nano channel, and you can uh, so make sense the nano channel how small the nano channel is. This one is a three thirty nanometer. It's the same some of size of the uh, wavelength of UV light, and then this one is a visible same as visible light. So our device has already same as wavelengths of light. So uh, like this way, so uh, now the fluidics uh, become some uh, the very, very small some uh, spaces. And uh, in such a case, the TRM cannot apply because our excitation and the flow beam are as a larger uh, than the, uh, the channel side. So this kind of the geometrical so opposite uh, cannot work. So, and so that is why so we so introduce wave optics for the photosomal of detection. Oh, this is a nano channel. And then, so we introduce uh, two kinds of the, of the probing. So 
the phase of the, the two problem is a completely opposite side. And after the interference, this uh, problem completely is, uh, no, disappeared. However, in case of some, no, uh, we introduce an uh, excitation beam, and then there's a target, so no, there's uh, the target molecule, the target molecule emitted the heat, and then the heat changes the refractive index, and then so the phase shift, so no, the occur from the refractive index change. And then after some uh, of the phase shift, the interference still remains the same part of, of the of light. And then so that from the intensity of, the, of this interference, uh, interference of, of light, so we can know the, how many some uh, molecule is what's there. And so that uh, this is the principle of the uh, photothermal some uh, induced um, uh, the, uh, effect by some uh, the, uh, and, uh, and other for, for DIC, so no uh, differential interference contrast or microscope. And then so uh, the, this one is an uh, optical ray in this phase six. So that so the name so now uh, is a photothermal. Some uh, optical phase shift, some uh, spectroscopy. So that now uh, we call this one as a uh, the pops. And then so that this is an optical some uh, other configuration, optics configuration of uh, pops. And then so that uh, we introduce uh, one some uh, other problem, and it's separated by DIC prism. And then so the phase is a completely some uh, the opposite phase. And then so the, oh, this one or oh, oh, this one uh, uh, is a uh, or uh, some uh, mix again, and then so the uh, interface uh, some, uh, some, uh, the occurred, so under the so next to the IC prism. And then so the uh, so, uh, excitation beam is uh, introduced like this one. And then so the, uh, the uh, phase shift of this side so the, uh, is occurred like this way. And then after the interference, then the sum of uh, the uh, component is still remain. Uh, this is uh, some of uh, the working principle of the DIC. So. And then so the most important point of this uh, the principle is uh, uh, some, uh, the distance between the uh, two problem. So one problem has the same some uh, 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 the axis as uh, uh, the, uh, the excitation beam. And then the sum of so, uh, diffusion, diffusion lengths covers the, those two some of uh, the problem. The, uh, in case the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, summer effect reaches uh, this side the problem. So the, uh, the difference of the phase so, uh, could not appear. That is why the, uh, so this side of the problem should uh, so, so apart from some uh, uh, summer diffusion lengths like this way. So the shear value of the DIC is uh, quite important. And that is why so now we designed the new DIC prism and fabricated the new DIC and the prism. And then so all this kind of the large share value uh, was uh, so, uh, realized. And then, and then so that now uh, the DIC TLM is realized. And then so that uh, so we'd like to, uh, I'd like to so introduce uh, how to use this one for the, and then so the example is a single cell analysis. I'd like to so, uh, hurry up. <laughs> uh, so that the experience was like this way. So we um, uh, uh, stimulated the top one, uh, stimulated the single B cell. It's a living B cell, living single B cell. And the, uh, the simulation is the top one. And then so that uh, some cytokine so is released from the single B cell. And then so our collaborator want to know the quantity of interleukin-6. And then so that uh, um, we uh, tried to some, uh, integrate all kind of the this experiment. The usually some of the, of the biochemists uses this kind of the big cherry and then so that for the culture, the cell, and then so simulate and then so sample it. And then so sample of the solution is also analyzed by the, some of the immune assay. And then so, or however, some now we integrate all of the procedure so onto the micro and the nano hybrid of fluidics. And the, this part is a micro space. And then, so this part is a nano is a, a fluidic space, and this is a micro space. And so in the so, micro space, we can culture the cell, single cell like this one. And we picked up the so, target cell, and then we moved it to this um, or the, or chamber. This single chamber is a size interface between micro and nano. And so the nano space is very good for the chemical procedure of the countable number of the molecule. 
And then so that this one and uh, so the for the, uh, the uh, cell and this one nanospace is uh, for the molecular process. And then so in between the micro and the nano, we fabricated the size interface the, for the sampling. And so uh, the, uh, the most important point for the single cell analysis is keeping the ultimate small volume. And then so that uh, the integration of the entire process is a uh, quite important so requirement. And then so that uh, so we design so now the now micro and the nano fluid device, uh, which can cover the, all of the procedure. And then the, the design method the same. We so describe the flowchart of the experiment, and then so we picked up we picked up the uh, nano and the micro so now unit operation like this one. And then so that now those nano and the micro unit operation can be uh, some uh, combined serially parallelly according to this. Uh, or the, uh, or the project. And then this one is a design. So, uh, and then so all those ones are the micro channel. And so in between the micro channel, we fabricate the nano channel. So the, uh, some, oh, this one is a fabricated uh, so micro channel and the nano channel. And then, so it's very complicated to explain the, uh, the working principle. I'd like to so, uh, the, uh, use um, the animation. And then so that this one is our some uh, microfluidics channel, and then the cell is um, so picked up by optical tweezer. And then so that uh, this is a target uh, or single cell. And we stimulated the cell or target cell by stimulant like this way. And then some uh, the released uh, the cytokine is um, some uh, uh, so sampled by the femtoliter pipette. And then it's moved to the picolita at the flask, like this way. And then after treatment of the sample, then this one is moved to the some of the femtolita some now uh, immunoassay chamber, like this way. And then so the target some of the uh, cytokine, so IL6 is captured like this way. And then so that oh, this is very small, so no some no, no target molecule can escape. And so that our uh, so enzyme labeled antibody is attacked. And then so color change of the enzymatic substrate and so uh, occurred. And then the, our POPS detector, DICTLM, uh, can detect so the color change like this way. This is a working principle. And then so the, oh, this one is a fabricated nanochannel and you cannot see anything about here. However, at this point, so we fabricate uh, the single cell chamber like this one. And then, so this part is a femtoliter pipette. The volume is 800 femtoliter. And then this part is a picolita flask. And so, and so uh, after that, so we uh, fabricated um, our, our, our femtolita ELISA, so immunoassay chamber, like this way. So or like this way, so our fabrication is uh, already the femtolita and the picolita some our area. And then, so uh, this is an uh, evidence of uh, our device. So this is a target single cell, single B cell, living single cell. And then so we so, uh, picked up and then so, so placed it in a single cell chamber. And then so the, after that, so we introduced um, uh, the stimulant. Uh, this, this is a micro channel, micro uh, so stimulant solution can some uh, 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 stimulant uh, uh, solution so, uh, go through the micro channel. And then so we introduce stimulant uh, through the nano channel to some of uh, the single cell chamber. And then so the stimulant is um, uh, so disposed to the some, uh, single cell. And then, so after that, so we cut the uh, liquid like this way. And then, so that uh, this uh, the, you know, free interface can so, uh, maintain, uh, could be maintained so because of the surface tension is much larger than the gravity. Uh, so that uh, the, uh, we can keep it the six hours. And so that uh, uh, this um, uh, single target cell single, uh, emits uh, the uh, cytokine. And after that, we uh, so collect the sample by femtoliter pipette, so or like this way. And then so, okay. And then so the, uh, the volume is 800 uh, femtoliter. And after that, so uh, this uh, sample is moved to the uh, picolita flask. It's already moved, sorry. <laughs> and then so that after moving the sample, then so we introduce um, as a treatment buffer like this way. And then so that after that, so after treatment, all of the sample is moved to the, uh, the uh, femtoliter uh, 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 immunoassay uh, uh, the chamber, like this way. And then so that so this one or uh, the capture antibodies on uh, immobilized area. So uh, uh, 
And then, so that this is the end of the solution. And so the uh, immunoassay uh, the procedure is proceeding in this uh, channel. And then, so the washing buffer coming, and the so label antibody coming from here, and the washing buffer again come here. Nothing can be seen, but please trust me. So uh, the, uh, the uh, liquid is uh, uh, so back and forth, back and forth. And then, so after some uh, uh, the enzymatic reaction, the color change occur, and then so the our DICTRM POPS detector uh, could detect the signal. So uh, like this way. So this is a so real signal from single cell, and then so uh, like this way. So uh, we succeeded to uh, uh, the treat the single cell and uh, uh, some of uh, 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 all of the some of the, uh, the procedure of the experiment. And then also that we could detect a uh, uh, cytokine so by using the uh, POPs detector. And then so that this one is a calibration line, and then this is a signal, and this one is a number of the IL6 some uh, target molecule. And then so this one is uh, obtained signal from the simulated uh, of the single B cell. And then so the quantity of the um, some of uh, the uh, release is a uh, 136 molecule. And then so that or uh, the uh, this is a control, so no stimulation, and then so that uh, the, uh, the signal is like this way. And then so that con so control some uh, is a uh, 48. Uh, 49 molecules. Uh, so like this way, we have already succeeded uh, uh, the uh, single cell analysis at countable number of the molecule by using the so, nanofluidics and so, POPs detector. And then, so that, uh, we conclude, so this single B cell so, emitted 277 molecules for six hours of our stimulation. And then, so uh, this is um, uh, uh, our experiment setup. And so this one is a POPs detection. So then, uh, and so, uh, so there is one problem. So uh, the, uh, the space is uh, too narrow, and then the, uh, uh, the thermal diffusion length is uh, larger than the, uh, the channel. And then the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, photothermal effect occurred not only the liquid, but also the glass. However, the temperature coefficient of the uh, refractive index is are positive, negative, positive. That is why some compensation occurred. And so the, uh, the, uh, the pop detector so loses some sensitivity. However, even though some other some loss, some uh, we could detect a countable number of the detector. In case if uh, we can so solve the, this uh, kind of the problem, then the single molecule detection in the liquid is not some of the three. So uh, like this way, some, uh, we are now some, uh, uh, some, uh, in, some uh, uh, goes into the single cell at the countable numbers are experiment by using the photothermal also detector. And then, so this is a conclusion. Photothermal spectroscopy is a little sensitive. Even the countable number of the molecule can detect. And then, so the, it's widely applicable. It's an, uh, because our target is a non fluorescent one. And then, so the uh, demerit is a non selectivity. So the heat is heat. So that uh, the heat cannot so distinguish from so molecular A and molecular B. So the selectivity is a quite low. And then, so the, uh, the, uh, uh, the microfluidics and uh, the non fluidic chemistry is a, uh, so, uh, uh, enable the uh, fine molecular separation purification and uh, so it becomes a single component. And then, so the problem of the uh, micro and non or uh, as a detector, the Lambert from the Lambert barrel is uh, low, the, uh, the usual some, uh, or the absorption spectroscopy cannot apply. That's it why the only the LIF was the detector. But however, our photothermal some, uh, detector can some, uh, compensate those um, uh, the demerit each other. The microfluidic chemistry uh, 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 so, uh, provide the selectivity, the, uh, the single component. And then, so the photothermal some spectroscopy provides the brutal sensitive detector. And so that is why is uh, now photothermal spectroscopy and uh, microfluidics and nanofluidics chemistry is a very good sort of marriage. This is my conclusion. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kitamoi, for this uh, exciting uh, 
perspective on the combination of uh, microfluidics and even nanofluidics with photothermal uh, microscopy okay. and thermal lenses. Um, uh, the participants are welcome to ask questions either by uh, writing in the chat, chat or using the raised hand icon or just speaking up. Um, so because I see uh, no question um, at the moment, I can immediately ask the my first question. I was wondering in the case of uh, uh, the very small channels that you showed us, um, typically uh, you have volumes in the range of femto to picoliters. So yeah. Uh, what are the pressures needed to uh, to have reasonable uh, times of transfer? You know, okay. visco viscosity is a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. And then so uh, many people uh, ask the same question. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, the, for the microfluidics, the uh, resistance, pressure resistance is uh, quite low. And then so the, uh, so, uh, it's just uh, 0. Uh, 0.1 atmospheric pressure can operate okay. the uh, fluidics. And then so the, uh, for the nanofluidics, the operation pressure is a thousand times larger than the micro. Oh, okay, so yeah. mm. and But uh, it needs uh, just a um, uh, megapascal. And it's uh, some 10 or uh, ATM is uh, quite um, uh, sufficient. Then, so this pressure is the same as a uh, tire of a bicycle, bicycle tire is okay. um, yeah. about 10 ATM or something like that. And so that, okay. so, the, so it's a high pressure. A race bicycle. Uh, race uh, race. Not, not ultra high, we can control yeah. by using a pump and a compressor. Mm. Okay, yeah. very, very nice. Thank you very much. Um, are there more questions? I, I had an, another maybe related question. You showed at the beginning that it's possible to, to induce phase contact uh, between two different phases and then to separate the phases to extract a molecule, for example. Um, how, how difficult is it to separate the phase? Uh, how do you avoid that uh, phase A goes into the channel of phase B? Do you need some <laughs> special treatment of the, of the glass or how, how to avoid this? Yeah, and then so the, um, uh, so, so uh, the most important point is the DIC prism. And uh, so the, as I told you so, or the, in, uh, so in my lecture, the shear value, the distance of the two flow beam is quite important. And then so as you so pointed out, the, during the, or, or the, or during the, or the, or, or the, during passing through the, or the glass substrate, of course, the phase shift occurs. However, the, uh, the distance of the cover glass is not so thick. It's a 170 micrometer. And so the effect of the cover glass is not so large. And so that uh, we can easily so, obtain the, um, uh, the interference so, so, between the two flow beams. And so the most important point is a separation of the, the two flow beams. Okay. Um... Uh, are there uh, more questions? So I have a very quick yeah, uh, question. Subhasi uh, Sadika, please go ahead. So regarding the DIC TLM, so mm -hmm. you, you need to separate the two probe beam quite large distance because of the size of the yeah. thermal lens. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But if you go with a very high modulation frequency, mm -hmm. then the thermal lens can be smaller. And then maybe we do not need any special kind of beam split. Yes, yes, that's right. Be. Um, but our, but our distance um, and uh, so now the thickness of the channel is a uh, uh, several hundred nanometer. And so the, in case if uh, so we'd like to so, uh, we'd like to so, uh, make the thermal diffusion length smaller than one micrometer, the very very high frequency is needed. And yes. uh, as you may know, the signal of the photothermal effect is inversely proportional to the frequency. And so the, uh, the signal itself becomes quite weak. That is why we cannot somehow increase uh, the modulation frequency so high. Okay? Okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I don't uh, see more questions. 
I, I maybe have a short question. Yes, uh, Frank Sichos, please go ahead. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, the nice lecture, first of all. Um, I was interested in the, uh, you had a, a variant of the thermal lens microscopy involving a gradient index lens where you uh -huh. uh, focused uh, the pump and probe beam. So how is the detection there done um, in a way? Is that also <laughs> fiber-based or is that just... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. So now the both, uh, both sides is a fiber. And then, so the no, fiber the uh, detector side, so or the, our second commercialized one, so the, didn't use uh, the fiber. The detector itself is uh, attached to the, uh, uh, the device itself. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Please, please go ahead, uh, Professor Kobayashi. Oh. Uh, uh, and uh, you're going to Chihua, and I'm going to. Yes, yes. I, I'm we, we, we belong to the same university now. And yeah. my question is very, uh, thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Uh, something related to the uh, focusing on pipette. And then you mentioned that uh, that then positive for uh, silica and uh, negative for water. But, uh, ah, compensation, yeah, yeah, cancellation. Depending mm. on the time course, mm. and uh, especially in case of uh, water in mm. such a small size, I, I'm not sure, but uh, there is the N, it may be, N, delta N may be temp, uh, time dependent mm. uh, because <laughs> uh, thermal, yeah. Thermal effect, uh, uh, thermal conductivity, and uh, a kind of uh, circulation. So, mm. does it affect the signal size or noise? Maybe uh, mm. no, uh, noise uh, because of noise spectrum. Then, mm. then you may be suffer from the mm. in introduction of uh, noise. Okay, and then so. So um, uh, it's uh, not only the, the, our purpose detector, uh, but also the, uh, so all kind of the photosynthesis spectroscopy is the same. And then so the, uh, we measure the signal after reaching to the equilibrium. And so the, or the, or usually the uh, excitation is a, so excitation of, of beam is modulated. And then so the, so, or so synchronized to the, modulation, the photothermal phenomena is also occurred. And so after the summary, reaching to summary equilibrium, this kind of the modulated phenomena is stabilized. And this are uh, the stable some, uh, conditions, the probe mean, the probe the, uh, detected the, the signal caused mm -hmm. by the phenomena. And so that uh, the transient, transient of phenomena has a no relation to the, uh, the uh, uh, modulation so effect. Only the pulsed, only the pulsed photosomal effect, mm -hmm. pulsed photosomal effect depend on the time course mm -hmm. of the excitation and the probe. However, so, in our case, we always use a modulation and a stable some also or detection. So that and is then, why. Uh, yeah, the, uh, that's part I understand. But uh, uh, depending on the modulation frequency, then mm -hmm. and also the relation between modulation frequency and the relaxation mm -hmm. time, if mm -hmm. any, uh, mm -hmm. relaxation maybe thermal relaxation mm -hmm. and also some okay. kind of. I got to uh, I got to then the, mm -hmm. it may yeah. reduce. Uh, yeah. at some, uh -huh. in some condition. Yeah, that's right. And then so that in case if our uh, in case if the modulation frequency becomes very, very high, then so such kind of the uh, the, uh, uh, the relaxation time of the thermal phenomena and also the molecular process maybe some uh, becomes a, a, a bigger some of the problem. Mm -hmm. However, the our frequency is just uh, two ki two kilohertz, two kilohertz. Mm -hmm. Mm. Even uh, even there are some other pops detector, mm. so that is why some uh, time 
constant as a just of one millisecond of something. Mm -hmm. So the, that kind of the transient phenomena cannot mm -hmm. affect to the, our, our detection. Mm -hmm. In that sense, a, then, the, yeah, the, it, uh, the, of course, this method has very uh, high uh, applicability, but uh, for kind of uh, relaxation process, men, <laughs> To, that's right, that's right. It's not the yeah. applicable to such yeah. system. Yeah. With and then, uh, shorter, yeah. Shorter yeah, time yeah. Constant. You are right, you are right. And so the, actually, so we applied our system for the pulse excitation, femto, femtosecond laser some, uh, excitation. So in such a case, um, those kind of the, uh, the, uh, phenomena is uh, not the problem, uh, but uh, our target. <laughs> our target. Um, but uh, for the just for the, uh, the analytical application, analytical application, we don't use such kind of the high frequency and the short so duration of so, uh, pulse laser. Mm. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Very, you are, uh, yes, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Andrew. See you in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, see you Thank, in Taiwan. Thank you. I see yeah, another yeah, question yeah. by uh, Shokufi. So please, uh, please speak. Uh, hello, Professor Ori. Hello. Oh. Hi, hello. Uh, uh, hello, Professor Kitamori. Thank you very much for your for organization of this webinar. Uh, th very thanks. Uh, oh, you are welcome. My pleasure. Your, uh, My and honor. Professor Kitamori, thank you very much for your very nice presentation. Uh, I have a, a question about uh, commercialize of TLM uh, mm -hmm. for the next uh, uh, applications. Uh, if it is cop uh, if it is uh, uh, for uh, use for uh, wavelength scanning of thermal ELM <laughs> for commercialize in the yeah. new uh, next future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in case if the excitation laser becomes uh, cheap, cheaper, much cheaper than now, so we'd okay. like to we'd like to introduce um, some. Or uh, wavelength tunable TLM, okay. but unfortunately, there are some of uh, the tun tunable some uh, solid state um, uh, the laser still expensive. But are uh, some of uh, in case if uh, the cu our customer some uh, order the special design for the tunable TLM, then we can design and uh, some or. Uh, uh, Produce the commercialized one. Mm. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but maybe it's a uh, uh, it's cost uh, one million US or uh, a bit cheaper or something. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think it is uh, maybe for uh, a CCD array detector. Uh, array detection simultaneous uh, wavelength of obtained from analyte uh, analyzers uh, such as uh, yeah, you mean uh, you mean the sim simultaneous simultaneous um, detection of our uh, uh, multi wavelengths multi okay. yeah yeah so it may be possible but also it costs a lot mm. thank you very much That's it. All right, so thank you very much. So I think I don't see immediately any new questions. So I think it's time now to uh, thank uh, our speaker very, very much again. Thank all participants for, for being here. Uh, so I'm uh, closing this uh, webinar of today. Um, I think that will also close the series, but before that, uh, Subhazi Sadika is going to, I think, give the final address. So please, Subhazi, go ahead. So thank you yeah. all, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you all for participating and we thank also all the speaker. It was, I think, wonderful webinar and we are very pleased to hear uh, yeah, quite nice talks on the photothermal spectroscopy and microscopy. We may start again this webinar series later, maybe next year or two years later, but we didn't decide yet, but you will get to know by email. So thank you once again, yeah.